Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable, we've got Eric, not Pro Peterson. We've got the big papa himself, Tate Litchfield. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. We've got the Geek Pay Guru, nine. And then last but not least, this podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and landmoto.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, how's it going? It's going great. It's going great. Um, am I the only one that took yesterday off to uh, recover from boot camp? What did you guys do to recover? Eric? I stayed a extra day and a half, I guess. I, I left uh, yesterday just before lunch, and um, I ended up taking that time to just kind of relax and uh, get some extra sleep. I was I was done. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Tate? Uh, you know, I spent the day riding my bikes, grabbed some lunch, slept in, hung out with the baby. But yeah, I was exhausted. Yeah, Zen Master. Yeah, we stayed a little later. We went over to Sedona. Uh, the auction balls were, were very kind. They gave us a tour of, uh, of, uh, of Sedona. But I did come back yesterday, and last night, the way I calmed down was s'mores and a New England fire. I mean, what's more New England than that? <laughs> nice. Well, I was, I was going to say clam chowder, but I guess not. <laughs> chowder. Chowder. <laughs> yeah, chowder head. More on uh, Sedona and the uh, javelina. Uh, on my tip of the week. So I'll save that for that. Yeah. By the way, you know, since we're talking about the Archibalds in Sedona, um, yeah. they're, they're well, awesome to have a boot camp, but they got Scott and I, these mugs that say Team Tate. You and, guys are uh, awesome. You're welcome. The, the coffee goes down so bitter now. I feel like me. there's one mug missing. Yeah. But there's think, one mug uh, missing. There's a public service <laughs> announcement to be made by our very, very own Mr. Scott Todd. Well, okay. I'm, I feel like I, I feel like I'm being forced to, to, to do this, but okay. So Tate, I, I have a confession to make. Okay. Like I was given this nice team Tate mug and you know, like there, there were some times where like, I may have been trying to like, just to forget about it. Right. Like it wasn't on purpose, but it's like, you know, it, it's, it's not really like team Scott and that's really like what I was focused on. Scott, was so, this, hold on, hold on. Was this before or after my team beat your team in our game? You're you're breaking up there. You're breaking up. You're you're breaking up. I see. You guys had you had a, a whatever. Okay, like eh, he's a different conversation. However, Tate, as we were leaving the room, you're like Scott. Wait, don't forget your team Tate mug. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I was carrying that mug, and um, you know, we you and I went to lunch. And I set it on the table right next to me because it was so precious to me. Like it was so important. I didn't want it to like roll off the chair and break. And I mean, like <laughs> I, I like was looking forward to, to, to sharing a drink out of that today. And we got done with lunch and we left and then I got on my plane and you got on your plane. And then I was literally traveling halfway across the country and I'm like, crap, where's my team Tate mug? And I'm like, I, 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 what, what happened to it? And I was replaying all the things that could happen. And I just remembered that it was seated on the table next to me when I got up and left. And it kind of just blended into the Marriott China. So I never saw it because it. You, you know what Freud says? I don't know. There are no accidents. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, may, I don't, may, maybe. I don't maybe. forgive. Well, I'm not asking for forgiveness. I don't forgive you. Know, you. Like, in the spirit of transparency and because I'm such a compassionate guy, <laughs> I wanted to like, just like, let you know, like, if you don't see it, it's there. And that shouldn't stop, shouldn't stop anything because look, you know, at the last boot camp, I actually left something at the hotel, the dining room table. You had to go get it for me like yes, a week later. So maybe Mark, if it's really important to him, he'll run down to the Marriott and pick it up <laughs> off the table. And like wrap it up and ship it nicely to me. Like you know what? I already have my team Tate mug, which I which is like <laughs> one of my prized possessions now. So I'm not I'm not schlepping back there, even though it's only like eight minutes from me. Anyways, let's let's talk to nine for a second. 
<laughs> Nine, how did you recover and what were your boot camp takeaways? Oh, man, there was so much there. You know, actually, you know, I feel very, very grateful to uh, Scott. So I'm wearing my uh, Superman shirt here <laughs> in honor of all the great information that I got out of that. Oh, the knife. <laughs> Superman Scott. Okay, so what's, okay, so you were, you were in the VIP sessions mm -hmm. in the breakout room. What were, what were some of your, your uh, takeaways from VIP? You know, I get so much out of that every time. It's like being able to scale and organize the business, uh, going into details about, about sales and how, how to grow. Uh, those, I mean, you have to come to bootcamp. I mean, there's, there's just no excuse. You have to come to bootcamp if, if you want to be able to be very successful at this business. Yeah. Nine, what number is this for you? Um, I think, I think this was six actually. Six. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And it, it just gets better and better every single time. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we, we get those surveys. We actually take them to heart. People are like, Oh yeah, we thought the survey. No, we really, we really listen. And we, we, uh, we look for the, the overall themes and, and we adjust. Eric Peterson, what was your biggest takeaway from boot camp? Uh, well, this was, this was the first boot camp I was at where I was able to attend the VIP sessions and, um, you know, being able to participate there was, was just great. Um, there was so much information, um, from, you know, once again, you know, organizing and automating the business to, um, dealing with buyers lists and talking about some secret ninja tricks in order to, uh, to get that buyers list working for you. Um, so that was great. And then on top of that, I mean, just the community as a whole, getting to, to actually shake hands with, you know, those people we, we communicate with on a regular basis and actually, you know, getting to know them a little bit and, and making some connections there. So um, those were probably my biggest takeaways right off the top. Yeah. Speaking of, you went to uh, what is one of the best ice cream shops in the country, Sweet Republic. <laughs> Question, what flavor did you get? I got the real mint chip and I was very surprised by it. That, that was really amazing. That, that sweet, that real mint. It's like any, any other place you go to, they say, Oh, I put real mint in there. Now this is, this is the first time I've ever had truly great ice cream. You know, so yeah. Kudos to Eric for choosing that one. <laughs> that, that's, that's how we do it. That's how we do it here. Uh, Zen master Mike, what were some of your boot camp takeaways? Well, you know, I always, I'm not, I always say I love the fact that there's people that are new, people experience and the interaction. But I think I also, there's a fair number of people that may have tried land investing prior to coming to the Land Geek, right? And then seeing their reaction to how we do it and how, you know, much easier it is once you embrace the way that we handle, you know, all this whole process. It was really kind of fun. I, I mean, there was a few people that I spoke to and, and that was their takeaway. It was like just wow, this, it, it doesn't have to be difficult. You know, it doesn't, you know, we have a method that works and interacting with people and seeing that, uh, I think really, I love that. I love that. I love seeing people that love our method because our method, it works. I have to say it's the best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, of course I'm going to say that I'm very <laughs> self-serving, but, um, look, I'm, it's I'm true though. It's a breath of fresh air. I'm flexible like a yogi. If there's something better out there, like I'll embrace it. We just haven't found anything. Um, right. I've got a question for you, Mike, especially with systems okay. and automation, because I sometimes feel like with newbies coming to boot camp, um, there's like a chicken and egg problem, right? Because, you know, the cheapest person you can hire in the beginning is yourself, right? Yeah. So you feel sort of, you don't want to, you don't want to start spending money on VAs or um, software or this, you know, team to start scaling when you don't have any revenue coming in yet. So when do you right. start getting yourself out of the business and how do you do that when you don't have any revenue to support that growth? Yeah, it's an, that's an important question. And I can only relate it to my personal experience. And, and when I got up in front of the room and I talked about Scott Todd and his progression versus my progression in the beginning, I mean, Scott's someone that embraced systems very early. And, you know, he's got that ability to embrace the systems and all the VAs. And I was kind of like, well, I'm going to do it myself, build it as I go. And then things blew up and they didn't blow up into a system. They blew up into everywhere. 
and I had lots of deals, lots of money coming through, but I had to reel them all in. You know, the whole story I said of the, uh, the net and the minnows, like I had all these minnows, lots of deals going everywhere, but I'm trying to put them into this net. And then Scott very patiently sitting there, builds the net and he pours the minnows inside and it's like, what? You know, so embracing the systems earlier than later is your truth path to success. That is the way you, you need to explode into a system, not explode and then try to contain it. Uh, that's just, that's just crazy. And I can say that because I went through that. But of course, I'm fortunate. I hang around with the right people. I have access to the right systems, and life's different. Yeah, I mean, Scott, what do you what do you think? Like the, that chicken egg problem. How did you sort of bridge that gap when the ch when the cheapest person you can hire is yourself? Well, I mean, I did it. I did it piece by piece, right? Like I, the very first job that I got rid of was my list scrubbing, and uh, I found somebody that could go do it for three dollars an hour. And I was really, really careful. I limited them to like three hours a week. So what was my financial commitment? 20, uh, 27, no, uh, three times. I've already forgotten math. Nine times four is 36, $36 a, a month was my financial like exposure. And I'm like, well, okay, well I can afford $36 a month. That's not a big deal. So I didn't just go and like blow up this big team. I started with one and I probably had that one VA doing that work for, I mean, like, quite some time, you know, like a couple months. And then uh, the next thing I wanted to get rid of was due diligence. Okay. And it didn't happen like immediately. It happened like uh, I was probably doing the work for, I don't know, a few months, you know, four five, six months because the volume wasn't there. You know, like it wasn't, it didn't become a volume issue until I was kind of scanning a little bit. So then the next one that I uh, went through was uh, due diligence. And then that was only on a property by property basis. So it wasn't even costing me any money per week. It, it was only going to cost me money if I was going to buy something. Um, and so, you know, I think what happens is if you try to go and build this VA team and you're trying to give them work or you're trying to get them to give you work, that's going to cost you some money. But if we're all starting off just slow, well, you only need one VA, whatever the pain point is. And for me, it was list scrubbing for $36 a month worth it. I, I love that answer. You know, just take it slowly and, and piece by piece. Um, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you build a VA team? One bite at a time. Uh, Tate Litchfield, what were your biggest boot camp takeaways besides getting eight hours sleep when you have a newborn at home? Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> one thing that I took away from it that's always just so amazing to me is our community. It's more of a family than a community. And the amount of caring in that room, whether it's the VIP room or the introductory room, you know, everybody wants the same thing and everybody's willing to do whatever they can to help the person next to them achieve that goal. And that's something that's just amazing. It's unlike any other, you know, real estate conference that anyone's ever going to go to. You know, I hope that people leave boot camp with a new friend or two or a dozen, you know, so that's something that's just so unique to us. And Every time I leave boot camp and I'm, I leave with, you know, some good memories and you know, some helpful advice that's going to help me transform our, my business into something even better. So that's why I'm there. I, I'm in the double digits now and I don't see stop, myself stopping anytime soon. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And I, you know, sometimes I think to myself, you know, like these guys that, that have their, like their big events, but they don't show up. I'm like, how can you not show up to your own event? Right. Yeah. And I get, the, I get the, the idea of it. Like, well, you know, then you're, you're not being an entrepreneur, you're being a freelancer, but these are the things like, I love freelancing, like, you know, being, you know, face to face with people that are, you know, moving the needle in their lives, doing this business and hearing their stories and how they're, you know, implementing it and the freedom and the flexibility that it's giving them for me is like so inspiring. Like, why would I want to miss that? Let's, I'm doing it. And uh, it's, and then, you know, it is like a family to see people like the Archibalds and Mimi and Nine and, you know, Bay and, uh, you know, Sean and Rachel and the Zanos again. I mean, it's like, you know, like they just keep coming back and back. Did I say nine? And nine, of course. <laughs> Um, it's, it is, it's like, it, it's, it's amazing. This is like the first time Tom Willis wasn't at, at a boot camp, and like, since like, the, like, he's like at number nine or something, but, uh, it's, it's great. It's great, uh, for me. So let's, uh, let's pivot a bit and let's talk about, um, sort of a, a newbie issue that we see a lot. We, we kind of heard this a little bit 
at boot camp. So you're going in, you got your list, you're scrubbing your list, and now it's time to price your list, right? And so the way that we do it is we look at the comps, we divide by four, we've got that Warren Buffett margin of safety. So at least we're gonna make 300% return on our investment. But what happens, right? The comps are all over the place. So you're just kind of, you know, gotta figure this out. So Mike Zeno, how do you do this? Yeah, this is the first wall. This is the first paralysis by over analysis that hits people, right? They get this list and it's just a, it's just a ton of data and then, and then they scrub it down and then the pricing, it's, it's very difficult for people to wrap their head in the beginning until they're showing what we do. But uh, the reality is it's, you know, list scrubbing is quick and dirty. It's something that, you know, isn't an, it's exact in the sense that we have a formula, but we don't overthink it. And this is something that's really important. Like they don't realize that when these accepted offers come back, if you're off by a few numbers, it's not a big deal. If you're off by a large amount of numbers, it's not a big deal. It's all about recovering and, and negotiating. And uh, so I think that, yeah, the, the prices can be difficult, but once you learn how to batch them, once you learn the, the simple formula that we use, and it's a quick and dirty process. It doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to have paralysis. I love it. How about you, Nine? Yeah, the important takeaway is to just get it out there, right? To really put in, uh, you know, put in put in your best effort at this time, but don't let it stop you from not mailing, which is, you know, the very core. You can learn from it. People will call you. Uh, they may not be happy, and then you'll be able to adjust. You know, you don't have any feedback right now, and that's the biggest part. You need feedback, uh, you know, from those mailings, you know, to understand that, okay, well, I need to adjust a little bit. But if you don't do it, if you're paralyzed, then you're just going to sit there and then this is not going to go anywhere. So you need to just put it out there and, and get that feedback and, and, and adjust from there. I love it. Eric Peterson. Yeah, I think um, with pricing, uh, there's no wrong answer, right? I mean, so, so you send out your offers and, and you're too low or you're too high. Well, you can make an adjustment, you know, you can renegotiate those deals that come back. Um, and if, if you're sending 20 a day, um, you know, two weeks later, when you start hearing back from those first mailings, you know, if you need to make an adjustment to go up or down, you can continue to make that. I mean, there, I guess it's, you know, I don't, um, I don't look at it as a big deal. You know, you just, you got to start somewhere and, and uh, make your adjustments as you go. All right, Scott Todd. You know, I think that one of the hardest things is to put your head around the fact that you can actually make up your own price, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's hard because we're so accustomed to being told what to pay. You know, there's always an, a seller asking for something. You know, like someone's selling you something, they want to sell a piece of a house or they want to sell a car. Guess what? They put a price on it. Here, you actually have to come up with your own price first and essentially it's like name your own price and that's a hard thing to do. Uh, and so really what I like to think of is I use the comps not as like the absolute benchmark, but I start to think about like, okay, well, what am I gonna sell this property for? How much am I gonna sell the property for? And then when I know that number, then I can divide by four and get my offer price. But uh, uh, I mean, this is like name your own price. Yeah, Team Tate, what about you? Yeah, I mean, Obviously, I look at kind of what the comps are, but ultimately, I'm the one that decides. So I know what a property should be worth. I know what I want to get for it, and that's what I go with. And <laughs> yeah, don't act like it's that bitter. You know you like <laughs> drinking out I, of it. I know. I know. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I agree 100% with what Scott said. I mean, this is an inefficient market, right? That's why I love it. I yeah, I mean – a neighbor selling their property for more or less than me, right? Yeah, I mean, what, what other, you know, inefficient market is there out there, maybe art, where it's truly what a buyer and a seller agree on? You know, you have the art market, maybe. That's very inefficient. Are there any other markets that are very similar to this that are that inefficient? Not that I can think of. I mean, that's the beauty of it. That's why I love it. Yeah, wine, maybe? I don't yeah. know. Rare books. Rare books. Yeah. And all those things are physical. This is the only uh, thing that you don't have to maintain at the store that's, that's that inefficient, right? Can you imagine having a, you know, a rare book 
business and having to store these, protect these things, insure these things. You know, the wine breaks. That would be horrible. <laughs> or spoils. Um, the arts counterfeit. I don't know. Anyways, I'm I, I'm I'm uh, digress. <laughs> I'm digressing. I'm getting I'm getting off track here. There, there is a good book, No County for Old Men, I once read. That was a good book. I don't know what its value is, but. Okay, let's talk about No County for Old Men. <laughs> so this is a true story. If you haven't seen the movie No Country for Old Men, it's about uh, a sheriff who starts to see he's kind of in over his head because the world is changing and there's this horrible serial killer out there, Anton Chigurh, and uh, you got to watch the movie. Anyway, and it's also... You know, beautiful. It's filmed in West Texas where I own some land. So Eric starts telling me the story at boot camp about this one seller whom I had met years ago with Duran. And during the meeting, he insults me. He insults Duran. Duran and I are driving around looking at the property that he owns. We get a flat tire. There's no cell service. We almost die out there. And I bought some properties from his daughter, but he wouldn't sell. And, you know, we tried to negotiate this. He had a huge, huge portfolio of properties. And we, you know, we tried to do a, a takedown deal. And we negotiate. He's like, oh, I'm, my daughter's just selling the property for me. And here is sweet Eric Peterson. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. And let Eric tell the story about my seller. Look how I take claim to him. <laughs> so, I mean... He just got a purchase agreement like everybody else and he happened to, to sign it and return it to me and um, he didn't provide an email, just a phone number. Um, we did the due diligence on the property and we're prepared to close and I had uh, followed up with him to, to try and get some answers to some questions prior to closing and uh, I called him and before I could say more than my name, he hangs up on me and so... I'm like, okay, well, I got to talk to this guy. You know, he's, he agreed to sell me the property. So I'm like, all right, I'll just try him back. So I try him back and I, you know, I maybe say my name again and, and part of my company name and he hangs up. And so I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? You know? So I call back a third time and I don't, honestly, I don't remember if it was the third or the fourth time, but I, I was trying to speak really fast and, and kind of give my spiel as quick as I could and say, you know, you signed this purchase agreement. I'm just trying to buy your property and all this stuff. And um, so he finally like heard me out and he's like, all right. Yeah. You know, um, that's, here's the answers to your questions. You know, let's go ahead and close. And uh, so, so I did that and, uh, we had a, a few issues along the way with the closing. He didn't want to close the way I wanted to close. Um, so after he got that closing package in the mail, because uh, he doesn't have email, um, he, he called me and said, you know, I'm not doing the deal like this. And I said, you know, I called him back. I said, you know, I asked him what he wanted to do and, and talked to him a little bit. He told me who he was and told me I could check him out a little bit and which I did. And he, you know, explained he's got all this other property and um, so on and so forth. Um, nonetheless, we, we got through that first hurdle and, and got that first deal closed. And immediately he let me know he had some more properties for me to look at and gave me a list of four properties to look at. I purchased those. And then he gave me a list of about 16 properties and I'm in the process of working on those and should be closing later this month. And he's just like, you know, I'll, we'll keep this going um, as long as you want to buy property. So I had no idea that uh, <laughs> he was your guy or someone else's guy or anything like that. It was just, uh, you know, I was like happy to, uh, to have stumbled upon him. So, yeah. I mean, so I think the moral of the story is, is that persistence beats resistance. And the fact that I personally didn't like the guy and didn't stay in touch with him, allowed Eric to get that deal because if I just stayed with him, you know, at least if I just called him quarterly and just said, Hey, you know, whenever you're ready, I'm here. Whenever you're ready, I'm here for years and years and years. I probably would have gotten that deal at some point and just, you know, got on over myself and maybe taken a little bit of his abuse because once he sells me the property, I don't have to deal with him anymore. Um, and so am I happy for Eric? I don't know. 
a little bit. It's yet to be determined, right? It's yet to be determined. I'm really happy for him. And, uh, and it just goes to show that, you know, it, it really is a, a numbers game. And you just got to show up and good things will happen. Tate, how are we going to get that deal from Eric? I don't know. Maybe ask nicely. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, Eric, I mean, when, you, when you're drowning in these properties, you give me a call, right? <laughs> no county for old men. No county yeah. for old men. So, you know, basically what we'll do is we'll just call Eric every day. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not going to call him. I'm going to have fancy hands call him. I have fancy hands call him. Yeah. You ready, you ready to sell some day. properties? You ready oh. to sell some properties? Um, <laughs> And that way we're dealing with someone we like. Wow. Let him deal with the, uh, the curmudgeon. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh, I almost died meeting. So yeah, and he did admit that he, he could be a, a very grumpy man and he, he kind of apologized for that, but he said, you know, that's, you catch me at the wrong time and I'm just, I'm not a happy guy, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Scott Todd, what's your takeaway from that story? Well, my takeaway is uh, you messed up. <laughs> I messed, exactly. I messed up. You should have been all over this guy. And when you were tired of him, you should have got Tate on him. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, it's interesting how I want to blame, you know, Eric, right, for taking my deal. But who's ultimately responsible for losing that deal? Me. Yeah. Right. That's a, Mark, that's a you know hard pill team Tate cup to swallow. You, you know, you know <laughs> what this reminds me of? It really reminds me of like um, the fact that if, this mug was so important to Tate. He should have made sure that I picked it up off the table and carried it. Hey, yeah. I cannot take care of you all the time, Scott. I mean, <laughs> I, I just can't hold your hand for everything. At some point, you got to spread your wings and fly. Hey, man, obviously the, the cup was more important to you than me. <laughs> oh, boy, when, Scott, oh. when Scott cuts, he cuts deep. Nope. Oh, not the Didn't. bat. Not the bat. What's better than putting the cup on the table and hitting it with a bat? You could have did that. <laughs> could have done that. I, I do miss my mug, though. I, Karen, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, he's shaking his head no. If you're watching the video, Karen and Ken, you got to watch the video of this, just so you know. Um, and Karen was so sweet. This is the first time in years this has ever happened. Someone – came Karen actually got my wife a gift for you know being grateful that she was you know allow like sharing me to spend time with our community and taking away time from my family and I thought that was just so so sweet and uh you know so Karen and Ken if you're, if you're listening to this I, I'm really grateful for both of you and my wife was like what is that like she was just taken aback um so thank you for that so Let's go to uh, tip of the week. And I am definitely going to be hazing Eric about something at some point during the tip of the week. But let's start with, with nine. We'll, we'll let nine warm us up. All right. Well, you know, when you're first starting out, you're looking for all these books. You're looking for, you know, you're looking for envelopes and, and how to, uh, you know, looking for the best price because you're, you're looking at cash flow, right? So one of the, one of the tools that I use um, – for other things now is uh, camel, camel, camel .com. camel, it's, camel, camel .com. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. It's a free Amazon price tracker. So if nothing else, you can go in and look for these books. You know, you can't read them all at once, right? So you can put them on your list, check them out, see what the prices are, and get it at, get it at the right price. Just like land. Oh, I love this. They'll tell you the, uh, they'll show you history. Um, you know, what the, what the prices are, you know, you can put, you can uh, sign up for uh, get notifications and then get your envelopes, get, you know, get your, whatever you, whatever you're doing. Everybody uses Amazon, right? So I'm yeah, sure I, want, I, want that, I want that Mavic drone. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Okay. So I go in there, DJI Mavic pro, and then I don't hit order now. I just yeah. watch it. Right. You can uh, click on the click on the name of it, and then you see this little graph tells you what the prices were for what are the price history. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like last six months, last month, all time. All right, so I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start tracking because I I just want to buy this at a, a lower price than Scott. That's all I care about really. And start tracking. 
Actually, Easy. yeah. Like uh, I got this. I saw I saw Scott had this really cool microphone, and then uh, I I tracked it and I got it for like half price. Wow. It's just like land, right? Get it get it for half price. Yeah, absolutely. Never pay retail. <laughs> I love it. That's a great tip. All right. And you don't even have to send him an offer letter. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Tate, what's your tip of the week? All right. So I got two tips of the week and one is uh, specifically for Mark, uh, the Hamilton app. There is an app for <laughs> Hamilton and you can uh, enter. Oh, <laughs> oh. Hey, you just froze. No, as you say, there's a Hamilton app, right? And you can enter it and get uh, entered into lottery tickets to buy, you know, show tickets basically. So check it out. I don't know if you're a big Hamilton fan, it's worth the download. And my you know, other tip, I'm not, I'm not throwing away my shot because I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy and hungry. <laughs> All right, here we go again, Scott. I opened it up bag of worms. But my next tip is a little bit more helpful. It's a website or an app. It's called sendoutcards.com. Not sure if you've seen it or anything like it, but I got one this week in the mail. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. Basically, um, when somebody does something nice for you, you, base, you can go on to the app and uh, create them a card, a personalized card. And you can either send a thank you card, a congratulations card, whatever it might be. We got one in the mail for, it was a baby, you know, congratulations on your baby kind of thing. And it was just a really cool concept. Um, the person didn't have to go to Hallmark or Target to buy anything. You plug in your address, their address, and you hit go and it just sends it out automatically. And I just thought it was a, you know, it was a really nice thing to receive. And I thought, how can we incorporate something like this into our business? Well, there's a million different ways. But for the low price of, I think it's like $2 a card, um, you can send a thank you to people who buy your properties or whatever it might be. But uh, it's a really easy way to uh, show your appreciation to your customers for you know, making their payments on time or selling you their land or whatever it might be. So check it out, sendoutcards.com. Uh, I think there's definitely room for it in the business. I love it. I, I actually want to ask Scott, do you like send out cards or simple postcard better? Uh, simple postcard. Why do you like it better? Right from my phone, right? Uh, it's, it's easy, man. It's easy. And it's what I do. Okay. Why change? Fair enough. Now, um, if it was $1.95, we can rush it over and change. <laughs> no, that's a great tip. That's a great tip. Uh, Zen Master, Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? Well, I just ordered a heavy bag using Nine's, uh, um, nine's uh, tip, and then I just sent a thank you card used to him using Tate's tip. So those are pretty helpful. I do like them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, love the, I, love the, I love the action taking right away. Exactly. So you might wonder what a javelina, a cactus pear, and Alice Cooper have in common, right? And how it even relates to land, right? I mean, like, where does this even go? So I told you went out to Sedona. Right, and you may have heard of the javelina, Mark. Uh, I'm sure I, that I have seen the javelina eating yeah. my cacti. This and is where I will not move to Arizona ever. It's a nice yeah. place to visit, but never ever will I move there. So I thought I was picking up a uh, cactus pear, but it must have been a javelina that had shape shifted because it bit me right in the finger. And uh, yeah, got the cactus pear right there. And I'll tell you, Whoa. I never got hit by a cactus pear. But not, so what happened was tons of pain. I got this big. Cactus pear, I mean, it must have been like this huge, right? The pricker coming out the cactus pear. And then this Alice Cooper lives in Sedona. And we were going to visit, uh, this, and there was this beautiful, like, church or something up on top of the rocks that we went over, overlooks this house, and suddenly the pain was gone. So I'm like, Alice Cooper, this has got to be something magic about the area. So I look him up, and lo and behold, look at this quote. This is an Alice Cooper quote. You're going to love it. It says, uh, uh, mistakes are part of the game. It's how well you recover from them. That's the mark of a great player. And I love that. We're always talking about recovery. So Alice Cooper, here he is. He's got some advice for us in the land business. Mistakes are part of the game. It's how well you recover from them. That's the mark of a great player. So making mistakes, we're all going to make them. Just keep recovering, keep moving forward. And that's how we're going to get you know better and better and do more deals and do them more efficiently. 
What a wise, profound, and compassionate quote from the Zen of Alice Cooper. Yeah. What do you, what do you think, Scott Todd? <laughs> he can't even talk. I'm just lobbying this to him. <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure out what a dang uh, Havalima is here over here. Like, I never even heard of this. It's thing. like an ugly blind pig. Yeah. <laughs> it's an ugly blind pig. And they hang out in cottage did, bushes. How, how did you not see this thing? It was shape shifted into the shape of a, a cactus pan. I went to pick it up and boom, right on the finger, it got me. <laughs> I'm telling you, it stung. And then it, but, shipped right, it shaped right back to a cactus pan. No one believed it, but that was a javelina. I saw it. I, you're, you're serious. Like this thing, this living animal was shaped like a cactus. They're very, ask Mark, he knows, they're very sneaky. Look, I, I, you know, Mike doesn't like to talk about his peyote addiction very often, <laughs> but you go out in the desert and uh, these things happen for, for Mike. I'm like, look, I love cactus pay. I'm going to get me one. Wham! I'll Wham. do it. He's like, is that a javelina? And then it's a cactus bear. <laughs> well, these things look these things look crazy, man. Oh, you're they looking at cactus. Right? Yeah, yeah, they, they're eating the cactus for Pete's sake. That that just yeah. tells you enough, right there. I had that happen to me once at a Grateful Dead concert. I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, all right. All right. Eric, great tip by Alice Cooper, right? I mean, that's a great tip, Alice Cooper. We could take that, that is a great quote. Yeah. All right, Eric, not Pro Peterson. What's your tip of the week? All right, so let's see. We've talked about Mix Max. We've talked about Boomerang. So today I'm going to bring up Polymail. It's P-O-L-Y-M-A-I-L. It's actually a, a mail client for the Mac. Um, so it has some similar features to um, Boomerang or Mix Max in that, you know, you can look at opens of your messages. You can... Um, send things later. Um, there's some campaign um, options, which I don't fully know how to use yet. I'm just kind of looking into this this week. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's pretty decent. It is free, but if you want some of the more advanced features, I think it's like $10 a month for a pro account. So um, I don't know. Cool. All right. Um, polymail. I, you know, um, what do you think, guys? Mike is like, can I comment <laughs> now? Hey, Mike, you're on mute. I, I don't know if he was looking into it recently or five minutes ago. I was just confused. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, uh, I'm I just downloaded kidding, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded it in the past, and I, I'm trying it again this week to, to okay, see if sorry. it can solve some of Just my issues. Just ask it. So. Just a question. <laughs> All right. Well, well speaking Fair of enough. E yeah, I, mean, I mean, speaking of email clients, um, that reminds me of my tip of the week, which actually Scott Todd gave me this weekend. So there is this psychological phenomenon called random reward, right? And every time like I would check email, I'd get like this random reward, like a, like a slot machine. So did I get a good one? Did I get a bad one? Right. And my mood would kind of like ebb and flow based on the random reward of what I got in my email. So Scott finally grabs me by the back of the neck in a very compassionate way. It says, Mark, it's time to delete your Apple mail from your phone. And that way, if you want to check your email, you got to go to your laptop and, and check it you know, like in the office, like a normal person does, right? So I was very scared, very hesitant to do this. I did it and I, I'm telling you, I, I can't wait to delete more apps. I'm deleting Facebook today. I'm getting rid of everything. And uh, I feel great. I'm lighter, I'm less distracted. Um, I talked to my kids for the first time in weeks because I wasn't checking email constantly. Um, amazing, amazing tip. So Scott, Thank you so much for making me do that. My, my pleasure. Very, very compassionate me, I think. I think it was. And you notice, like, even on this uh, podcast, I haven't even checked my phone, right? Like, usually, I, like, I'll kind of look at my phone, especially if, you know, Eric is giving his tip of the week. Like, I'm like, oh, whatever. And then I'm just, like, you know, distracted, <laughs> right? But now I'm fully present. So, great. That's tip. awesome. So, in honor of your amazing tip for me, I'm going to let you end with your tip of the week, Scott. 
Well, my, my tip of the week is kind of a, a kind of a fun one. May, maybe one that you might enjoy, Mark. Okay. So, uh, Mark, do you like sci-fi? I mean, I think you do, right? Like you like sci-fi stuff. Who doesn't like sci-fi? Ha- have you heard of the book Ready Player One? Have you heard about this book? No. Okay. Am I, getting, am I buying this book right now? You're going to go buy the book. You can get on Audible, right? That's all good. It's, it is a sci-fi book that has like a 4.7 something rated rating on Amazon. 13,000 people have read this thing. And here's why it's important. First of all, I was tipped off this by a, a blogger that I watch and he basically was raving about this book and it takes place in 2044 and the, uh, the earth is contaminated. It's, it's the, the only way that you can kind of escape it is to put on these virtual reality goggles and there's like clues, puzzle pieces all around. And so he's playing through the game until he realizes that, um, Hey, there are other players in this game that are willing to uh, kill for the ultimate prize. And this, this is why it's important. It's important because this book it's, it's, well, it's kind of, Cool. One, the book um, takes place like in the 80s. This guy is a prodigy of the 80s. So like he references things that we kind of all grew up with, like Pac-Man and, you know, uh, some pretty cool movies, Back to the Future and everything. So he's kind of like bringing those things in to the, um, into the, to the novel. But this is what's cool. Next year, next year, the movie's coming out and it's being directed by Steven Spielberg. So read it now before the movie comes out. So you get the whole grasp of it because Spielberg's producing this movie. And that's kind of a cool thing too, because how many, how many movies did Spielberg produce in the eighties? Like uh, the Goonies and I mean, countless movies, right? Right, So it should be kind of cool to see. And if you, if you actually take this whole thing a step further and you start watching the trailer because they, they have released the trailers, there's entire like subreddits on this trailer where they're breaking down and telling you like, Hey, at this point, there's, there's like a QR code on the car, scan it. And like, it relates back to the book. Like this, this, this trailer is loaded with references back to like the eighties. It's really, really cool. And so the book, the movie should be really cool. The book is, is pretty cool. I haven't read the whole thing, but I've started it. You guys will enjoy it. And it will take your mind off of like, like your land business and just like to relax. All it's right, Mike's, nice. Mike's got his hand raised. What's going on, Mike? <laughs> Like, I love it. I, I feel like I've actually had influence on Scott Todd instead of the other way around. It's like I have the quotes, and, and now he's going towards books, and, and it's like he's morphing in my direction. And I have to tell you, I, I was going to say this earlier, no lie. The art or the science of getting rich for that book he wrecked, I have it on, it's on repeat. It plays over and over and over. That is one of the best books I've ever listened to. So I just feel like I may be... All that stuff he's done to influence me, i finally done something to influence him. This is, this well, is a happy moment. Mike, 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 this isn't the only thing influence you've had on me. Because <laughs> at boot camp, you you bought this beautiful like Scottsdale white like sweatshirt thing. Yes. Right? And like I was so moved by it that I had to go buy one of my own, which I did. We wore it on the last day. We were yeah, matching. It's kind of buy a lodge. So I had to get extra lodge. That's another story, but a <laughs> little little odd. <laughs> You know, like, but it's okay. See, like, you're making me, I you're feel really making better. me this into like a day. Zen. This is a good moment. This is a great moment. I, I bought you're, the same one on, on Camel, Camel, Camel for half off. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> we know you didn't. <laughs> Anyways, all right, Tate. We got to ask Scott, uh, Endurance or Shackleton's Incredible Voyage or Ready Player One? Uh, endurance by far. I mean, it's one of the greatest stories of all time. And guess what? It's real. This other Mark, one, here, here's the thing about endurance. Team here's the Tate, thing about endurance. Team Tate just brought back. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Because last week I was raving about endurance, right? Like I, I agreed with Tate. Like that was a good, a good match. Because like the thing about endurance is that it is the ultimate like trainer for leadership, right? Like it is a phenomenal tool to like teach you how to lead because that's what he did. He had to lead his crew and um, the the entire story is amazing. However, if you need, if you need to relax, if you need to watch out for these blind pigs in Arizona and you just like, you know, don't want to get hurt anymore and you just want to kind of live in your own little bubble, well, you know, ready player one could take you to where you can't be. 
All right. Well, tomorrow I will be proudly wearing my new shirt from Eric Peterson, by the way. About the team I, Scott one. Yeah, of course it's Team Scott, but it also right. says Kaizen. So right. I can't wait to wear that tomorrow. Well, I thought this was a great roundtable. Um, are we good? Yes. We're good, Mark. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. And look, the only way we're going to continue these podcasts and these roundtables, if you do this a small little favor, because Eric Peterson is just like just about had it with us. And he said, Mark, the only way I'll continue to come on the, on the roundtable is if people subscribe they rate and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at the link.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Also, if you want to get ready for bootcamp in Orlando, it is coming up fast in October. Go to the link.com forward slash bootcamp. I think we've got a few spots left. All right. Should we do this? Let's do it, Mark. One, one, two. two. Three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. Oh my gosh, was that bad? That was pretty good. All right, our our good, our, yeah. our podcast just really like I, like there's gonna be a like a subreddit like today worst ending of, <laughs> of all time. I, I think like especially when you listen to it like on the one and a half speed, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> Does it sound good on one half speed? Because I've been listening at one and a half, and it's like, oh, yeah, 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 it kind of works. Uh, I've been listening to it on the Land Geek uh, app, but we don't have the one and a half speed yet. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I, maybe I should go back to like Downcast. That's the whole other thing is like, how do you listen to the podcast? Like, what app do you use? We could talk about that next week. <laughs> I don't know. But thanks, guys. This is great. And uh, Eric, we'll, we'll renegotiate that, that deal. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Let freedom ring. Breathe in. Breathe out the mailing. Marketing. All right. Thanks, guys.